What's good, everybody? Welcome back to Whole Views. Thank you for clicking the thumbnail. My name is Corey, and we're going to be discussing solar opposites. We're going to be talking spoilers for the season. I did get a chance to watch the entire thing. So we're going to talk about where do the solar opposite seasons rank in your opinion for me? I feel like season one was good because of that initial entry. Season two was just a little bit too much over the top. And season three, I probably have to go back and revisit it. But season three to me feels like the next best thing after season one. So the way I would rank them just going off the top would be season one, three, and then two. Two was just a little bit wild to me. Like they, it felt like they were pushing the envelope just to push it. Here in season three, we get a little bit of serialization of the series, which is something that we didn't really see much of in seasons one and two. We did get the wall episodes, which are always serialized, and I like that. But with the wall here in season three, there are not full length dedicated episodes to the wall. It tends to be more like a little bit of wall sprinkled throughout, which I prefer over season two, which tended to have more wall centric heavy episodes. It didn't feel as sprinkled. This season, season three, I feel like the wall is very well sprinkled throughout the entire season. The biggest thing that I enjoyed about season three is that we no longer have Corvo in the, the main mission of let's get off the planet, let's get off the planet, let's leave Earth. It kind of shows a turn to his character and he's finally embracing being here. And that doesn't mean much for this very zany group of, of individuals, but it's cool to see that his thinking has shifted after three seasons and like over 20 episodes of this, we finally have a shift in a few of the characters because everyone else is pretty consistent. You know, Terry is, is just all over the place, but he's been that way. Uh, Yumulak and, and his sister, they tend to be in the same veins as well, like very much into teenage drama. Yumulak just kind of overcompensating for pretty much everything present in his life. In season three, you get to see a change in Corvo and that's, that's very cool. Another change in season three that I noticed that's very significant is that we get a lot more of Aisha, the computer that is on board the boat. I really enjoyed the episode where they talk about all the other teams. That was probably my favorite episode next to uh, Tim's death inside of the wall. The Tim's death episode, it almost got me. It almost got me to believe that they had actually made it out of the wall. It wasn't until they took the aliens hostage that I actually started to think like, no, something is not right about this this cannot all really be happening. There's some type of simulation, there's some type of gotcha moment that's gonna come. And lo and behold, it did come and he was just dying. And it was very comical the way he passed with the, with the nurses at his bedside and him like gurgling out some nonsense and then making fun of that. It was, it was funny. It was a funny moment, uh, even though it was a character passing. Thinking about the Aisha character though, going, circling back to Aisha and, and being aboard, the ship and the ship kind of recounting all the different stories. I think we're in a place where these guys really and truly are the last ones of their, their species, or at least the last ones to get sent off from the planet they got sent off of. Because like she mentioned, there's, there's been thousands of iterations of these characters. So it was akin to an episode of Rick and Morty that we recently saw where there were so many different clones of Rick and they were all like either clones or robots or something like that. I don't remember the episode exactly, but I do remember uh, they cannibalized themselves and kept fighting and kept fighting and kind of weeding each other out. It was cool to see something that I feel is pretty parallel in that episode. So I would say those two, the episode with, with all the other teams and the episode with Tim's passing. Those were my top two episodes from the season. And again, I just like the tonal shift that, hey, we, we here and we're gonna do our best to make the best of it. So. That was cool. No more trying to raise the pupa. I like the pupa. The pupa came alive this season. He started talking and stuff. The way the series ended though, or I say series, the season ended with the pupa being the focus and them accepting normal sitcom-like lives for the sake of the pupa. It was kind of anticlimactic. I didn't like the, the exit to the season, but I did like the entire ride through the season. So wild little show. I really enjoy it. Uh, I hope that they, they renew it because I, the way I think the series was actually rolled out was that 
they initially received like a 40, 30 or 40 episode order and they kind of filled that uh, within the first season of release and we've gotten like season one, season two back to back and now season three and possibly season four are gonna be the ones that, that are like, hey, we are stretching our legs now and doing more new material. I think my numbers was off when I was just talking right just now, but I think my idea is right. Like they got an initial run of like two seasons and then seasons three and four is like gonna be more experimental, if, if that makes sense. I don't remember where I read that. It might've been last year when the last season rolled out. But uh, that's also like a good reason as to why they've been able to roll out the seasons each year, each summer, like they have. So I'm hoping that continues as well. I, I do like the show. It's a cool, cool little um, bubble animated show to watch and that'll carry you through from Rick and Morty between their seasons. Now you get drops of this, which is very, very similar in tone. Justin Roiland is so close to doing Rick when he's doing Corvo, and they even reference the fourth wall breaks in this one. It's, it's pretty cool. They're so fast and so slick. They even reference Justin Roiland a few times in this, this, this season. So again, I'm liking the show. Let me know what you think about the show. How do you rank those seasons of Solar Opposites? Because I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a whole bunch. Anyway, that's all we got for this here video. Enjoy yourself, guard your heart, go watch something good.